Hello, welcome to this lesson in Engineering Mechanics. Here we're going to continue talking about the moment of a force, and we're talking about the scalar calculation. Uh, don't forget the big, big picture here. We're going to solve this problem, but ultimately the problem that we're going to do here and in the next section, there are going to be two-dimensional problems. In other words, you can draw them flat on a sheet of paper. And so when you have that, all of the forces are in one plane, and even though I'm kind of hinting to you that this moment idea is, a, is really a vector, really whenever we're doing two-dimensional problems, you can do scalar calculation, which we've already talked about uh, in the last section. And, uh, but as we get into three-dimensional problems, where we have forces pointing in all different directions, then ultimately it'll be a vector calculation. We'll, we'll kind of get there as we go. But for now, let's say we have two-dimensional type of problem like this, and I know it looks ugly, it looks like uh, a lot of things are going on, but just boil it down to essentially you have some kind of a cross here. This could be a, a piece of metal uh, in the shape of a, a cross or uh, a piece of wood or something. And we have some different points, A, B, C, and D, and E marked on here. And then we have three forces. We have, uh, we have a force at C going this way at 90 newtons. We have a force at B up at an angle, 30 degrees at 150 newtons. We have a force acting on D going straight up at 120 newtons. Now everything in red here is just dimensions. It's just, it's just dimensions to tell you how far away everything is from one another. So yes, it looks ugly, but just basically boil it down. You have a piece of metal, you have three forces, and then you have a bunch of dimensions. Some of the dimensions you're going to use, and some of them you may not need. But you need to get used to the idea of seeing a lot of dimensions in your problems. So the first uh, guy here, or part A, I guess you'd say, we want to find the moment of force C, F sub C. And when you talk about the moment of a force, you have to talk about, about what point you're talking about, about uh, point B. Because remember, we talked in the last section that the moment of a force is basically the, uh, the perpendicular component of that force acting you know, some distance away from a point. So when you're talking about a moment, it's always about some point because it's trying to cause a rotation about that point. So in this particular case, we're only concerned with F sub C. We're not even concerned about these guys in this part of the problem, F sub C, and a causing a rotation essentially about point B. So if you could kind of take a nail here and just kind of pound it in into point B here so that if you start swinging this thing, it's going to rotate about point B. We want to know how much of a rotation, essentially is what a moment is, would be caused by F sub C uh, about this axis here, about some nail sticking through B, causing the whole thing to rotate like this. Well, first of all, you can see that the force is directed this way. So even without doing any calculations, it, you just use your imagination. Forget about these other forces. They're not even part of this problem. Uh, we're only talking about the moment of this force about this point. So if you grab this and pull it, you can see the whole thing is going to swing up, which is a rotation in the counterclockwise direction. And if you remember, we talked before, rotations counterclockwise, the same way that you measure angles in trigonometry, counterclockwise, I should say, uh, those are going to be denoted positive. So the moment that's going to be produced by this force acting and causing a rotation about B, it's going to be going in a counterclockwise direction, so it's going to end up being a positive answer. You can do that without even doing any calculations. Now, in order to actually make some progress, remember that the moment about point B, that's why we're putting a B here, is basically going to be FD, the force that you're talking about times the distance between the, the uh, line of action of the force and where the actual axis of rotation is. But kind of buried in this, what we talked about